Uh, well, good, uh, good afternoon to you or good morning or uh, even good evening to, to some of you. Um, so I'm Cedric Porter uh, and I'm giving the fourth uh, uh, World Potato Congress webinar and I'm going to be talking about uh, the World Potato Output and Trade uh, and I'm the editor and owner of World Potato Markets, uh, which is a weekly newsletter uh, on the global potato market looking at potato, uh, potato um, prices, production and trade, and that's read by potato professionals from across the world uh, and all the major uh, potato growing regions. So really just trying to give a, a sort of 20 minute overview uh, of some of the research that we've done on the potato market in the last year uh, and where it might be going uh, and some of the uh, issues surrounding that. So if we, we look at the first uh, slide here, world potato production slightly off a, uh, a record uh, last year in 2018. Uh, our, our predictions, we've had the UN FAO uh, figures for 2017, which showed record around 388 million tonnes of potatoes produced around the world. We've slightly reduced that in our own estimates uh, for 2018, uh, largely because of lower production uh, in Europe and a little bit um, um, in North America. Uh, but around about in 2019, we could be seeing uh, a record production. Uh, and at some point, we're going to near, uh, get near the sort of 400 million tonnes uh, produced, which is quite impressive growth from um, 30 years ago. Uh, when it was around about just over 260 million tonnes. So significant growth, um, although that has to be in sort of put in context with some of the other crops, things like corn and wheat, rice, uh, have been growing at a faster rate uh, as the world needs more food. Um, and then perhaps some of those other crops have been growing at a faster rate. But, but um, the overall trend is for higher um, potato production. Uh, across the world. Just looking at and breaking those figures down into, to, into yield and area, that, that, that increase in production has really been driven by uh, higher yields um, rather than a larger area. So we're looking around about 19 million hectares uh, of, of, of land growing potatoes. Uh, and that's really been like that for all of this sort of century, give and take on a, a, a few years. Um, but you see there, um, that increase in yields going up from around about 15 tonnes a hectare uh, 30 years ago to over 20 tonnes a hectare. Uh, and, and this is a global average yield. Of course, you, you, you see in parts, some parts of the world uh, on, on perhaps on a larger scale, um, people, farmers producing more than 40 <coughs> uh, and in some cases 50 tonnes of, of, uh, of potatoes uh, a hectare. Um, so impressive yields, uh, but we're seeing that that's quite a sharp increase uh, across the world, and, and that's probably going to, to to continue as we see newer varieties, newer systems, and perhaps a consolidation of, of production of people rather than just producing potatoes for themselves and their uh, immediate families and immediate uh, communities, um, growing potatoes on a more commercial scale. You can see that sort of um, that figure increasing there. I'm just going to take a slug of water. And, um, and if we look at uh, some of the regional changes and, and some of the areas uh, that, that, that potatoes uh, are grown <coughs> and, and over the last, uh, really this, this decade, that sort of changes in there. You've seen um, uh, Asia growing more potatoes. So we're nearly up to the 200 million ton uh, level in, in Asia. Includes uh, the big um, potato uh, powerhouses, if you like, of, of China and, uh, and India, uh, and a lot of that growth there is, you know, around about sort of 150 million tons uh, in those two countries alone. So you can see why uh, Asia is a large grower of potatoes. We've actually seen, when we've seen this over a number of years now, and so certainly over the last sort of 40, 50 years, um, uh, we've seen a decline in the European production, partly as, as more countries in the east of Europe, um, they, uh, they've moved away from a more sort of collective system um, and the more sort of Soviet system, uh, grow, fewer potatoes grown there, a lot less potatoes grown for animal feed and things like that. 
Africa, we, we're seeing um, a really sort of uh, holding steady, if you like, of, of, of African production around about 25 to 30 million tonnes a year. Uh, South America, slight increase. North America, so again, holding steady um, uh, production over the uh, over the last um, over the last sort of decade or decade or so. Oceania, um, uh, an important grower for itself, but um, but you know by 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 far the sort of smallest grower of potatoes all outside Antarctica, um, and uh, and so so we continue to perhaps see that growth in in Asia. Uh, rather than other parts of the world as well. Um, so just, I'm just going to look really focused now on um, the two regions of the world that have perhaps, uh, they're not the largest producing regions of the world, but they do have a, a greater impact on perhaps on the world market than, than others uh, because of the trade that comes from those, and that's Europe and, uh, and North America. Uh, so we see that uh, that, um, that chart there on the left, uh, and that is European or EU production. These are the 28 countries of the EU, um, uh, the production there. Uh, and what we've seen there in um, 2018, that, uh, that uh, the column there on the, on the right of, the, of that left hand, just to, just to the left of that blue column there, uh, you see that there was quite a, a reduction in production to, in 2018 as, um, as because of the drought we saw uh, there. And so one of the lowest productions of, of, the, of the century or the lowest production of the century so far in 2018. That blue figure there on that um, right hand, or left hand um, chart, that blue column, is our predictions of what we're looking at uh, production for, 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 for this year. Uh, so around about a sort of 10% increase from, um, from, from production, slight increase in area, perhaps two, one, two, three percent We've seen some figures come out of Belgium uh, this, this week, seeing a, a 4% increase in their potato area uh, as they try and compensate for, for lower production last year. Um, but the sort of general trend has been very much a downward trend of EU production <clears throat> over the last um, sort of 20 years. Uh, and what then on that right hand chart we're, we're showing on that right hand chart there is the uh, the percentage of production and an output an area in production that's devoted to just five countries and those five countries are um, France, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium and UK. Uh, so just those five countries out of 28 in, in, in the entire European Union are, are now account for half the, the area. Uh, grown in the European U in Union, but over 60% of the production uh, with their higher yields and their more some consolidated farms and, and larger scale production uh, and processing. So that's very much a trend that we've seen that sort of consolidation into those larger, uh, those larger um, farms uh, in, in those five key countries there. Uh, drought is, is, uh, was, was a big issue uh, last year, sorry, let me just go uh, flipping back and forwards there. Um, so drought was a big issue in, in Europe uh, last year, really affecting production. And I'll go on to speak about that a little bit later on in terms of the uh, prospects for, for, for this year in terms of what, happened, what might happen with drought and whatever. So just zipping forward to um, North America uh, and there, we're, we're sort of predicting again, Slight increase, um, uh, a slight increase in, in the area uh, of, of, of production, um, but um, but you know the actual production itself was probably sort of holding steady around about um, uh, around about the sort of twenty, uh, just over the 20, 20 million tons mark, uh, and uh, so fairly sort of stable production there in in. Um, in the US. In Canada, uh, we're expecting there will be a sort of a bit of a bounce back from the, uh, the very early um, winter, uh, and uh, which, which affected the, the area of potatoes um, harvested in, in Canada. So we're expecting a, a small sort of jump back from, from, from that production. But again, a fairly sort of stable um, story here. Uh, there's been quite a lot of uh, investment in processing in both North uh, Canada and, and the US across North America. 
Uh, and so those large processing plants need their potatoes. Um, so th there's, there's a bit of a tension there in terms of, um, in terms of, of supply. Um, so that should sort of hold the market up. Uh, you know, from a grower point of view, it's probably quite a good position to be, to be in there. That the, you know, demand will be quite strong for the supply that there is there in 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 North America. So a similar picture actually in in both uh, the two main growing areas, Europe and North America, where probably not um, probably some more potatoes than there were in in twenty eighteen, but not uh, to such a great extent. There will be a, a massive oversupply. And so a little bit of tension in the market, perhaps not the sort of um, high prices that we've seen uh, in, in particularly in Europe. Um, prices this week have, uh, have sort of broken. Some French prices have actually broken through the 500 um, euros a ton mark for, for, for table potatoes, sort of fairly standard table potatoes going through the 500 euro a ton mark. Uh, processing potatoes at 300 euros a ton. So that's uh, around about sort of 360, 350, 364 um, US dollars for pr processing potatoes on the free buy market uh, and um, 500 and getting on towards 600 for on the table market for uh, US dollars. Uh, when you compare the processing price in Belgium, the free buy post processing price this year has been around about 300 euros for much of the season. Um, you look back last year when it was less, it got down to less than 15 tons, uh, 15 euros a ton. You can see that massive, that massive difference there. Uh, and so, so you know, it's, it's for planning for those, uh, those both both the growers and the uh, processors on a market like that can be quite difficult. So yeah, weather prospects have probably never been so crucial to the potato crop uh, in these two key areas uh, in, in Europe and, and North America as they have this year, uh, and um, uh, and it has been quite a dry winter again. We haven't seen the replenishing of um, rivers and reservoirs uh, and there isn't quite the same degree of um, ir irrigation in, in Europe as there would be in other parts in, in North America uh, and so very much reliant on, on, on rain, rainfall rather than irrigation and so we're in a bit of um, soil deficit for, for moisture at the moment uh, and so it's a fairly crucial in the next couple of months across May uh, and into June and July what happens we see a continuation of very dry weather and then if it gets quite hot over 30 degrees centigrade um, then then the crops could uh, be really sort of stressed and of course the flip side of that we could have um, uh, being dominated by the sort of Atlantic uh, weather systems we could have uh, very high levels of, of rainfall and a period of very high uh, rainfall which of course again, again is not good for potatoes um, so a bit of a, a sort of knife edge at the moment uh, if things stay sort of steady and we get um, reasonable warmth and we get reasonable rain, then we will have a, a, a good sized crop in Europe um, in terms, uh, perhaps not as large as the 2017 barn busting crop we saw then, uh, but, um, but certainly uh, much more than the, uh, the, the very small sort of crop that we saw in 2018. Um, but we're sort of predicting that, that, that we might be in the sort of middling um, uh, phase there. So there will be more potatoes around, but not um, to, to, to massively high levels. Uh, and, and so we will probably see uh, prices reducing on the free buy market, but not, not collapsing. So if we just move through to, to potato trade uh, and, and just look at some of those. Uh, figures there. These are your unique, exclusive um, figures that we, we we've done. Um, we we produced these, these in a review, uh, um, which is just coming out. So we, we, we're just putting that, publishing that now. And what you see there that just there were just um, the the world just produced, um, or the value of world potato trade trade in 2018 was only was up uh, at its highest ever, and only just up on 2017. So. Uh, you know, we're only talking um, 20, 20 odd million uh, euros, uh, 30 odd million um, 
um, uh, or, or even less than that in terms of US dollars. So it would only just got to, to that level. We're expecting probably in 2019 because of the higher price of, of potatoes and the higher price of potato product, you've seen the price of um, European fries or whatever on the export market increasing. Uh, and, and so we're expecting to, to have a, a much higher record in uh, 2019 and perhaps edging towards that 14 billion euros uh, mark uh, for, the, um, for, for the first time. So um, volumes were, were, were strong uh, in 2018, but it was very much a, a factor of price. The, uh, the, value was, uh, the, the value wasn't stronger. Uh, and uh, again, these, this really is dominated by uh, Europe and North America. 95% um, of fry exports are from just seven countries, and that's, that's, that would be, um, well, in order, that would be Belgium, Netherlands, uh, Canada, US, uh, France, Germany, and, and Poland. Uh, those seven countries just dominating um, the, the, the world supply of fries. Uh, and, 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 and again, if you look on the, the, the chart there on the right, um, more than 60% uh, just comes from five countries in the EU, um, which is uh, France, Germany, um, Netherlands, uh, UK and Belgium. Um, North America, uh, around about sort of 30% of world trade. So, I mean, that's, this is perhaps one of the questions for, for, for the, the world market. Are we so reliant on our trade in terms of... Um, uh, in terms of, of just, um, just, just, just a handful of countries there? Uh, and again, we, we look at where on that left-hand um, uh, left-hand chart, and it's forty percent of, uh, of, of the value just comes from five, five countries. So we are quite consolidated in terms of who supplies the world with its potatoes, which perhaps uh, could be an issue in the longer term. Um, import terms, it's a little bit uh, less consolidated. Uh, but again, it's, it, there is a, a dominance of, 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 of the EU. Um, a lot of world potatoes are being traded across borders in the EU. Uh, to, to, to say France supplies a lot to Belgium uh, and, and various other places to you know just to to, to, to make sure each uh, country's got enough of its own potatoes, either for processing or for for, for tableware. Um, and uh, there we have, uh, there are other suppliers. Middle East is quite a, a significant supply. In Africa, there's, there's trade of um, potatoes within Africa and outside Asia, a lot of inter, inter Asian trade. Uh, and then some in North America, a lot of potatoes going from Canada to, into, um, into US um, to, to supply its processing market there. But again, still a less consolidated picture, but still very much consolidated into Europe and North America. Um, just, just, just perhaps looking at some of the, the, the wider issues here, uh, just one slide here on the power of the potato that was discovered today, it would be the ultimate superfood, you know, it's uh, whether we do know it play enough of our, our favourite um, our favorite food, and our favourite tuber, um, fat-free, gluten-free, sodium-free, high in fibre, high in vitamin C, high in potassium, high in vitamin B6, plant-based, you know, the, the, the trend towards more veganism, environmentally friendly, uh, more, more calories, more uh, goodness per hectare than, than, than just about uh, all other crops, good value, um, uh, even despite some of the price rises we've seen in the last year, you know, as a, as, as a way of feeding yourself and your family, potatoes are a very good value, very good versatile. There's so many dishes that you can make potatoes. And of course, perhaps most importantly, it's, it's, it's delicious. Um, and I don't need to tell the potato world that, but perhaps we need to be, as a potato world, we need to be telling others uh, and reinforcing, reinforcing some of those uh, stories there. Uh, and I know that's that's a theme for the World Potato Congress and of course very much a theme for the um, International Potato Centre and it's a World Without Potatoes uh, campaign. Uh, and you can see that there from um, its website and just really highlighting to, to, to people across the world the, the, the importance of the potato in all types of market uh, in those perhaps in those more mature markets but also in the developing markets uh, as well. And a um, great story recently about a, an Irish charity who is helping um, bring potatoes into, into parts of Ethiopia. 
uh, and, and making it much more sort of food, food secure and then having a, a, a crop to sell as well. So not just giving food security, but actually uh, adding to the economy of the, uh, of the country as well. Uh, and, and as I say, I know this is one of the big themes of the World Potato Congress, both at the Congresses and in between the Congresses and, uh, you know, as an industry. It's, it's something that uh, perhaps we should all get be, um, behind. So just some, some final thoughts uh, as I sort of wrap up and then, then take questions. Um, potato production does continue to increase, but uh, whatever, uh, uh, um, and, and that is doing um, that across the world, but it's not at um, the same sort of rate as other crops. Uh, and whether that's something we should be concerned about. Um, trade is very consolidated and some um, production is quite consolidated as well. Very common trade in particular consolidated in Europe and North America. Uh, is that really an issue um, for those regions? Um, are, you know, in some parts of Europe it's, it's quite difficult to actually increase the number of um, uh, the, the, the area uh, to grow potatoes. Uh, but there's, 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 there should really be opportunities there for other parts of the world uh, as they can supply other parts of their own parts of the world and perhaps uh, increase trade themselves. Um, climate change is, is impacting on potatoes. I mean, we've seen that on a localised, uh, sort of weather-wise, uh, very much in the last year or so um, in, in, in major uh, potato grain parts of the world. Uh, but it does have a role as a, a climate-friendly crop um, being perhaps better user of water, better use of energy, better use of, of land uh, and, you know, it's high yielding um, does, does mean that some real climate change benefits from potatoes there as well. And so just, just, just really wrapping up with that, there's still plenty to do to promote potatoes as a good value, nutritious, environmentally friend, friendly crop. It's an exciting crop to, to, to be in. Certainly, uh, I find it a very exciting industry to, to be involved with and uh, you know, to, to share knowledge and experiences with people around the world is a real privilege. Uh, and um, I just like to thank people, pe people for that privilege. Um, but, it, you know, it, it, but I think as an industry, we need to, 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 to let some of our enthusiasm sort of brim over to others and, and, and show it as a crop that's, uh, that's not just good for you, but also good for the world. So, um, uh, I, we, as I said, we, we've just published our World Potato Market Review. Sorry, this is a bit of a plug. Uh, there it is. And uh, we're doing a special offer for anyone who um, through, comes through the World Pot uh, Potato Congress, uh, a special offer uh, of, of a, a third off the uh, normal price. Uh, and if you just want to come contact me, then we can uh, uh, follow that up with you. Um, so just... I'd just like to, to, to thank all our, our supporters at the World Potato Congress uh, and uh, that's a great list there uh, and all the other people behind um, the Congress uh, including Nora who, who um, runs these, these webinars and uh, Romain who, uh, who's, who's in, uh, Director General I think we call him uh, of the Congress but all these other people who the Amazon heroes of the Congress as well and, and also to those in uh, in Ireland and uh, Liam and his and his team are very much looking forward to to going there in just about two years time. So um, uh, so I'm now going to um, just switch off the the presentation and uh, we'll take some questions. I know I see there's some questions there, uh, but if there's any more questions, I'm through and uh, and quite happy to take questions full time for. For, for me, uh, more than happy to, to, to contact me by email or, or directly. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in Dublin. Thank you. So here we are with um, some questions. We've got here one here from, from, uh, from Roman. Uh, we, do you see any reason why, despite all the efforts in a number of developing countries, the growth in potato production is resulting from high yields and we see no increase in the planted areas. Um, I suppose, Romain, I suppose we've seen uh, that there's, there's, there's good developments in yields and varieties. And I think what's exciting is those, we're not just seeing those in the more mature, perhaps developed markets uh, of the world. We're actually seeing those in, in some of the uh, um, 
uh, in, in some of the um, uh, those 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 coming from other parts of the world as well. Uh, that you know, countries themselves are developing their own varieties. I know the International Potato Centre is doing a lot of work to increase the yields uh, and, uh, and reduce the vulnerability of potatoes, if you like, from drought resistance and things like that. So I think you know, it's, it's a good picture that this isn't about um, yield, uh, high yielding varieties that might work in, in North America or might work in Europe and then just trying to transport them in, into, into other countries. So there's a real resilience of developing new varieties in, in different parts of the world. You know, China's doing a lot of that. There's a lot of course happening in South America uh, and a lot of um, you know, real, uh, real good resilient uh, potatoes coming out of, um, out, of, out of Africa as well. Uh, another question here we have here, uh, do we notice a growth of local production in processed potato products in Africa, Asia, South America? I think we are, we're seeing that. Are we seeing, um, well, I suppose, I mean, you are seeing uh, some companies and countries actually working with, um, uh, with, with uh, from, from North American and European com uh, companies working with uh, local partners as well. But you are, I think you, you are seeing that sort of develop uh, local, local markets as well. And I think over time, that's only going to increase in terms of, uh, of what we see, uh, extra, extra um, processing as, as people want to have their own products. And people do, I suppose, quite like to have products that, uh, that are being produced quite, quite close to them. I, I suppose in terms of trade, it's important that um, there is freedom of trade, but that freedom of trade um, doesn't um, impact too, uh, too much on, on other, other people's production as well um so it's, it's 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 fair trade just as much as free tr free trade i suppose is, is 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 important there but uh i do see some potential on that and and i suppose particularly if we see some pressure on the production in in the sort of key european and north american parts of the world uh, then we perhaps will see some growth in in, in processing uh, elsewhere uh, in other parts of the world um, do we see, is there an opportunity, another question here, the opportunity for climate friendly potato varieties uh, locally developed and produced? I think there certainly is. I think there's, I think all crops really, we've got to be looking at climate resilience. Um, uh, a lot being talked about climate change and I think that is not just from a political point of view, that's very much from a practical, it, this is happening. Um, uh, and denying it is, is a bit sort of head, head in the sand. Uh, and so I think that is going to be one of the key criteria for um, uh, is resilience, climate resilience, if you like, in the, in the coming years uh, for, for potato crops and, and, and other crops. Um, we, we, I think we, are in, we do have an opportunity to produce more food from the land we're using. We can see that that's, that's, that's happening with potatoes and that's probably a good thing in, in terms of protecting other, perhaps more vulnerable um, uh, habitats and whatever that, that you know, if, if you can farm the, the, the farmable bits of land more effectively uh, without damaging them, but with, with, with still allowing for, um, uh, still, still, you know, still allowing for other other species and biodiversity to happen happen alongside it, and then to free up some of those perhaps more biodiverse, rich uh, uh, environments. Then, and I think there's there's that much more to be done on on, on waste. Um, and you know, there's there's quite a lot of some good work being done across the world on on, on wastage of potatoes, and a lot of that um, potato wastage is not in the field. Some in the store in stores. Uh, and then there's some uh, in, in, you know, in, in people's fridges, or they shouldn't be in the fridge, but in, in people's people's homes as well. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, waste wasted there. Uh, and I think again, technology can help with that. We, I think, we do need to be aware of some of the technology that we might be losing in terms of um, uh, agrochemicals and things. You know, there's always a temptation to to lose agrochemicals and not then sort of uh, ignore perhaps the unintended 
consequences of that in terms uh, of some of the chemistry that we, we then lose and we, we lose the efficiency of crop production. Um, but again, that's, that's, that's probably a, a scope for um, producing more products and different ways of, of being more resilient in the way we uh, produce and, uh, and store and, and even consume our potatoes. So um, lots of opportunities there for people to come up with new ways and, uh, and, and things, things, new ways of, of doing things. So, so exciting and uh, for, for people as well as, 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 well, uh, as within the, in the challenges there. Um, I, if, if, we, if we've got any more um, questions there, I'd be, uh, I'm more than happy to, 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 to pick those up. If, we, if we've not, then, uh, as I say, then please, um, please then um, just uh, uh, more than happy to, 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 to pick that anything up with you. And, uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm here. Not quite 24 hours a day, but uh, here to, to to answer your questions and uh, have have a conversation and celebrate the potato. So, uh, if we haven't any other quick last minute questions, then uh, many thanks for your time and attention. And again, thanks for the uh, World Potato Congress for giving me the uh, opportunity to share some of the um, the information and thoughts we have. And uh, wish you all uh, a happy Potato Day. Thank you very much. <laughs>